we are discussing the fruits of the Spirit, but mainly right now, the first one that's listed, which is the primary fruit of the Spirit, it's greater than all the rest, is love. And we've been in the book of Romans, so let's uh, look at Romans 12, verse 9. And it says, and I'm reading from the King James Version, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Now when it says the word dissimulation, let it be without dissimulation, it means without hypocrisy, without disguising your feelings. Be sincere in your love toward one another. I hope that are not having any motives behind it that are disguised, which is hypocrisy. Okay, Romans 13.10, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. What does this word ill mean? Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Well, it means any mode of, get this, mode of thinking, feeling, acting, So we aren't to think about bad things or injurious, injurious things or destructible things because the more we think about it and, and we get our feelings involved, uh, they turn into actions. And so it's really important to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Okay, when we do that, we are fulfilling the law. The law of God, yes. Romans 14, verse 15. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably, Hmm. Destroy not him with thy meat, for whom Christ died. Okay, so this grieving, do not grieve thy brother, means do not place sorrow, a heaviness upon your brother. Do not offend your brother. Do not create a sour, reluctant mind in your brother that creates a grudging spirit and grieved with thy meat. Well, this is talking about food. I would ask you to ask yourself, what about food would cause someone sorrow or bring heaviness upon them or offend them? What about food would cause a sour, grudging mind to be formed? I think we need to be thinking about these kinds of things. Destroy not him with thy meat, with thy food, for whom Christ died. It shows a whole new level of loving one another, doesn't it? Let's move on to Romans 15.30 and we'll end with this one. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. Well, here we are being encouraged to, he says, beseech you. Beseech here means comfort, instruct teach or beg so um, Paul is saying I beg of you to comfort I beg of you to instruct 
and teach for for the love of Christ to teach what what are we supposed to be doing that for teaching and instructing well it says that ye strive together with me okay this striving together means to help one another to struggle in company so we are our brother's keeper Galatians 6 2 we are to bear one another's burdens we are to strive together so he's saying strive together with me in your prayers to God for me so we ask for prayer to hold each other to help one another to instruct one another to comfort one another in our prayers to our Heavenly Father the different ways of loving one another can go deep to the point of praying for one another being concerned for one another and the food um, and even our thoughts so let's think about those areas of loving one another it's a challenge but I think we need to start um, being more considerate talking about preferring one another as Christ did